having a bit of a harvest focus. Um, how do you know when a crop is ready for harvest? Do you have a little peek and see if it's the right colour, like I said, touch with the sweet corn? Do you try and get someone to taste it? Do you look at the size and just know? Do you see how easily it comes off the plant? Would you know just because it's the right time of the year? We're going to be looking in the New Testament today. John's Gospel, um, in fact. Jesus, in this passage, says, Open your eyes, look at the fields, they are ripe for the harvest. We know that Jesus often used images from agricultural life to help teach about the kingdom. So we know that Jesus wasn't talking about the harvest of grain here or another crop. We know from the context of the story that Jesus was connecting harvest of produce with a greater harvest of people. Let's read this story, spend a few minutes thinking what Jesus might have been saying and what John wanted us to grasp from his account. The context of this story, well, Jesus has just met the Samaritan woman by the well. Jesus is breaking a number of taboos here. Um, he's speaking to a Samaritan, no self-respecting Jew would be willing to do that. Um, but he's also speaking to a woman, an alone woman. Um, the fact that she was drawing water in the middle of the day was a sure sign that she was an outsider even within her own community. Otherwise, she would have been drawing water in the cool of the day in the company and the safety of the rest of the women of her community. But what we have in this gospel is an amazing conversation with this woman, a deeply spiritual encounter. The disciples then arrive back, and John says, surprisingly, unsurprisingly perhaps, they're surprised to see Jesus talking to a woman. Let's read John 4, 27 to 38. Just then his disciples returned and were surprised to find him talking with a woman. But no one asked, what do you want? Why are you talking with her? Then leaving her jar of water, the woman went back to the town and said to the people, come, see a man who told me everything I ever did. Could this be the Messiah? They came out of the town and they made their way toward him. Meanwhile, his disciples urged him, Rabbi, eat something. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you know nothing about. Then his disciples said to each other, Could someone have brought him some food? My food, said Jesus, is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. Don't you have a saying? It's still four months until harvest. I tell you, open your eyes and look at the fields. They are ripe for harvest. Even now the one who reaps draws a wage and harvests a crop for eternal life so that the sower and the reaper may be glad together. Thus the saying, one sows and another reaps is true. I sent you to reap what you have not worked for. Others have done the hard work and you have reaped the benefits of their labour. The Samaritan woman, after her conversation with Jesus, well, she leaves the water jar behind. She's too excited and she rushes back to town to tell everyone to come and to see Jesus. And then we have a crowd from the town heading back um, to the well to see Jesus for themselves. The disciples seem to have left Jesus on his own to go and get perhaps some food. Um, they return and they're desperate for Jesus to eat. Um, then Jesus cryptically, and I'm sure quite annoyingly, says, I have food to eat that you know nothing about. And the disciples will miss Jesus' meaning. But then he explains, my food is to do the will of him who sent me. And to finish off his work. For Jesus talking to this lonely Samaritan woman in the middle of the day about the kingdom was the most important thing he could do. He was prioritising the kingdom over everything else at that moment. He was doing the Father's will, putting others' needs over his own. Maybe he could sense the crowd heading to the well to meet him. Later in the chapter, we hear Jesus and the disciples stay a few days in the town. But for now, the priority is not having lunch, but the priority is acting on his compassion and reaching out to the lost people heading his way. And so we get these well-known words, open your eyes, look at the fields, they are ripe for the harvest. In Jesus' time, harvest was a, a time for action. The moment the crop was ready, the sower would call everyone around to help gather that crop in. 
in our country, I'm sure the farmers know the moment they check the crops, they consider the weather forecast, and then it's all go to ensure the crop is gathered in at the optimum moment and perhaps a moment before the rains come. For Jesus, as he's talking to his disciples, there's that sense that the time is now. The approaching Samaritans are ready to hear the good news. It's time for action, time for Jesus and the disciples not to be thinking about lunch and their tummies, but to be thinking of a harvest for the kingdom. The woman at the well has piqued their interest. Her testimony, come and see the man who told me everything I did. Could this be the Messiah? Her testimony has opened their hearts to the possibility that Jesus is the one. And now Jesus and his disciples have some harvesting to do. I wonder what priority we give to this kingdom harvest. Jesus describes it as the will of the Father. Jesus says to his followers, open your eyes and see. The harvest in one town started with a story of one discredited woman. What could your or my testimony start? Why not pray that Jesus would give you an opportunity to sow the good news through your words this week with someone? Why not pray that Jesus would open your eyes, would open my eyes to the great need of those around us so that they would discover faith in Jesus? Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this story. We thank you for this conversation. We thank you for this woman's testimony. She would be amazed to know that we're still thinking of her story today. May we have stories to tell that open people's eyes. May our own eyes be open to the potential for gathering in a harvest here. Help us, we pray. Give us courage, we pray. Give us eyes ready to know when the moment is the hardest. In the precious name we pray. May God bless us this day. Of the king.